Haas here with uh, Big Daddy's Barbecue. Today we are at the playground for all things cooking. We're at, we're at Smart Food Service here in uh, Meridian, Idaho. Uh, this is where we go in the industry to find the meats that we're looking for or the different supplies that we might need in order to make a dish. Today we're going to talk briefly about uh, how to choose the meat that you're going to put on your smoker at home. Now, there's a number of different ways that you can do this, okay? You can do it by sight. Obviously, you're looking for good graining. You're looking for, you know, good fat content in the meat because, of course, fat is flavor. Or you can just take some of the help that the store gives you, and you can look at the different uh, cuts of meat. So, for instance, we've got brisket right here. This is a whole boneless beef brisket. Okay, this average is about 17 pounds, 18 pounds-ish. It's got the point and the flat attached, so it's what I call the primal. When you're looking at this, you want to look for, you know, discoloration of the fat content. You want to look for how much fat content is in there as well. You want some solid marbling, but yet you still want to make sure that you're able to, you know, trim off a little bit and still have that flavor. But first and foremost, what you want to look for when you're, when you're shopping for this stuff is what grade is it? Is it select, is it choice, or is it prime? There's many different levels of grading when it comes to the meat. At Big Daddy Barbecue, we use nothing but choice or better. And you can find that typically on the packaging, where you'll see it, it'll say USDA choice. Okay? And that holds true with almost all beef packaging especially when you're buying it in a commercial setting like this. Obviously the choice is going to be a little bit more expensive than the select, but you're going to find that the texture, the bite, and the meat itself is a much better quality in the choice. And when I say it's more expensive, we're talking, you know, five to 10 cents per pound. You know, whether you're buying top round, uh, eye round, brisket, or tri-tip, it all boils down to the same thing. Select is good, choice is better, prime is best. So it, when you're out at Shopco or... <laughs> so when you're out at some of the other uh, supermarkets in town, you know, especially if you're shopping in a deli case or a meat case of some kind, it's always going to tell you on there somewhere if it's choice. In most cases, that's what you're going to find if you're at you know, one of your favorite uh, supermarkets you know, or what have you. But there's that occasional time when you're going to get into some select, you know, or even what's called a Packer brand, in, in which that's just like, they just throw it in a box, wrap it in plastic, and send it out. So that's the stuff that you want to stay away from if you're cooking at home and you're wanting a, a good piece of meat. So some of the things to look for, you know, when you're shopping for this stuff, obviously, is the quality of the meat. And the reason that you're looking for that is the overall taste. Fat is flavor, 100%. The better the fat content in the meat, the better the flavor that you're going to have. That's why you see all these people are always talking about, oh, prime rib or, oh, you know, you, you want to make sure that you have, you know, the prime cut of meat. It's that fat content. Kobe beef, for instance, is riddled with fat content. Beer-fed cows and so on and so forth. I could go into a whole, that's a whole other video. But uh, that's the big thing behind Kobe beef is the amount of fat content. Get into prime, it's a little less. Get into choice, it's a little less than that. But the flavor is still there from that fat content. All right, we talked about beef a little bit. Now let's talk about some pork. Pork's a little different. It doesn't necessarily have the grating qualities that beef does. You can get a higher quality of pork if you're into some carabuda, you know, uh, something along those lines. But for the most part, pork is pork that I have found. Most pork is going to have a good fat content, so it's going to have that layering and it's going to have that great flavor. And again, with pork, much like anything else, fat is flavor. Um, the stuff that we get here at Smart Food Service, um, excellent quality. This is the stuff that everybody's going to be using. So, you know, whether you're running a barbecue restaurant or you're doing, uh, you know, some sort of a Mexican dish or, or anything like that, this pork is going to work great for, for what you're going to need. And you can get it bone in or boneless. We prefer to use bone in because there's more flavor in that bone just from the marrow and the fat content. So say you have a Traeger at home and, and you just want to throw some pork on the, on the smoker and, and give it a shot. Pork butt is hands down the best place to start. You might wonder, pork butt, 
Where does that come from? Well, it actually comes from the shoulder, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, this is what's referred to as a Boston butt. It's going to come from the front shoulder of the animal. All right. Now, when you get into what is traditionally the butt of the pig, you're going to find that that's going to be your shanks and your hams and, and, and that sort of thing. So when you're looking for meats to play around with, and a lot of people out there, much like myself, like to tinker, okay? You want to play around on your smoker. You want to try something that's a little different. This is how you try something different. And if you've never had this before, you're in for a treat. This is beef tongue, okay? You might think to yourself, are you kidding me? Well, no, I'm not. There's a certain way that you want to prepare this. You want to make sure that you get the skin off of it and what have you before um, you cook it. But beef tongue, excellent choice if you want to play around with something new. If you've ever had uh, uh, your know, tacos from your favorite Mexican joint or your, your taco truck, um, I think it's Laguina. I don't know Spanish. And I, I really don't know. Uh, huh? La lingua. Yeah, that's what it is. So uh, excellent, excellent, excellent piece of meat. You just have to get past the tongue part of it because that, that's the part that always scares everybody. Uh, but it's smart food service. That's the stuff you're going to find. You're going to be able to accommodate just about any style of cooking at this store, whether it be beef tongue, brisket, pork butt, um, sliced for your convenience, you know, packaging. This really is the place that you're going to find everything that you need, whether you're putting together a Thanksgiving meal or you're putting together a catering for, a catering for 150 people. Sausages, okay? This obviously is a prepackaged sausage. It's made, you know, someplace else, but it's high quality sausage. This isn't the stuff that you're going to be picking up, you know, from your meat counter at, you know, your local supermarket. Uh, this is all 100% built, packaged, and made for the restaurant industry. Um, so you're going to find things here that you're not going to find in some of the other uh, supermarkets. For instance, Zinner brand. Zinner comes out of Oregon, um, small family company that makes this sausage. Hands down, uh, probably the best sausage you're going to find anywhere in the Pacific Northwest. This is the sausage that we use at Big Daddy's Barbecue. Um, I love this stuff. I found these guys years and years ago, long before they became a, a, a staple in uh, the smart food service across the country. Uh, we've been using uh, Zinner sausages now for about 10 years. Um, it's the best quality sausage that I've found. And for those that have had the Big Daddy or, you know, some of our jalapeno cheddar sausage, you understand what I'm talking about. Excellent, excellent product. Uh, and again, you can find that here at uh, our smart food service. Another one of the, the advantages is hot dogs okay everybody everybody has hot dogs for their kids baseball team or something like that during the summer you can buy them in the five pound packages really really nice you can get armor you can get uh you know kosher hebrew national as you can see here they run their starringus um brand of meats and especially for the holidays when you've got family coming over you can get big packages of steaks, be it, you know, these here, which is the top sirloin. You've also got your strip steaks, also in a big package. And of course, everybody's favorite, the ribeye. That's a party in a package right there, people. So for $115, that's a, that's a bargain. It truly is. You know, you're talking about nine steaks that are gonna feed well over 12 people. That's a bargain for you right there. But it's your place for everything that you want, be it cheese, meats, dairy products. Um, you know, of course it's in bulk to some extent, but it's definitely worth the time and effort to come in, you know, and check it out. It's not like shopping at Costco, where you're gonna, you know, one day find something that you really, really like and go back the next day and you're gonna find that it's gone. These guys are gonna stock those items that are a the most popular and they're going to continue to stock them for the foreseeable future all right let's talk a little bit about tri-tip so what i look for when i'm shopping for tri-tip really is just a couple of things i want a solid fat cap on top of the tri-tip okay so for instance here again choice or better tri-tip 
This has got the cap on it, so it's cap on tri-tip. Um, typically, you're going to peel this off, but it gives you the option to leave as much of that fat content on there as you want. Um, or you can go the other route, pay just a little bit more, and go for a peeled tri-tip. Okay, so this has got the fat cap already peeled off of it. Um, there's very minimal amount of prep or work that you've got to do in order to prepare this. Um, very good product on, on either front. Again, I prefer the fat on just because of the flavor. And again, fat is flavor. Let's talk about ribs a little bit. So a lot of people ask all the, you know, what's the difference between the ribs? You've got a St. Louis, you've got a spare, you've got center cut, so on and so forth. This is a spare rib, okay? As you can see, this is, it's a very large piece of meat. You're gonna get a lot of the chine on the top of it, some of the breastbone, um, and a fair amount of meat. The difference between a spare rib and a St. Louis cut, for instance, like what we serve, at the restaurant, we serve a rib that is three pounds pre-cook um, in weight, okay? And it's gonna be squared off for us. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna come up through and they're gonna cut off this chine on the top. They're gonna cut off some of this, or they're gonna cut off this uh, piece of breastbone that's at the top and leave us with a nice uniform square piece of rib meat. Of course, it's got the bones in there. It does still have some of that fat content. And again, fat is flavor that's going to, uh, it's going to give you much more of a consistent um, look and uh, uh, presentation on that rib. Always a great choice. Spare ribs, perfect for the home cook. This is a perfect piece of meat to learn with. If you're going to be, you know, cooking a rib for the first time, this is what you're going to shoot for. And it's cheaper in most cases than you're going to find at any uh, uh, St. Louis style cut rib. So if you're looking for the smart food service near you, there's uh, three locations. One here in Meridian off of Hickory Way. There's also one in Nampa off of uh, Nampa Cobble Boulevard. And there's one in downtown Boise. So best bet, go on Google and uh, find the store that's closest to you. Come on by and check it out.